This video is the second of two on the musculoskeletal system. It covers the structure of skeletal muscle and muscle contraction, key concepts of the musculoskeletal system. In the video, we will look at the structure of the muscle cells, sarcomeres, motor units and action potentials, ending with the sliding filament theory of muscle contraction. Let's start with the structure of muscle tissue. Skeletal muscle is responsible for voluntary movements and is composed of muscle fibre bundles. The long muscle fibres are specialised skeletal muscle cells and are also called myocytes. These muscle fibre cells have distinct features including specialised organelles that contribute to their function. Within a muscle fibre we find various organelles including mitochondria to produce ATP for muscle contraction the sarcolemma or cell membrane of the muscle fibre, along which the action potential passes. The sarcolemma folds inwards towards the centre of the cell, forming these transverse or T-tubules. These are important in making sure the action potential reaches the sarcoplasmic reticulum, but more on this later. The sarcoplasmic reticulum is a specialised form of endoplasmic reticulum, and it stores and releases calcium ions required for muscle contraction. Myofibrils, which run the length of the muscle fibre, are composed of myofilaments, the contractile proteins involved in generating force. The thick filaments contain the contractile protein myosin, and the thin filaments contain the contractile protein actin. And finally, we have nuclei. In fact, many nuclei. Muscle fibre cells are multinucleate. As we delve further into the structure of skeletal muscle, we now need to look at the sarcomere, the smallest contractile unit of skeletal muscle. Sarcomeres are repeating segments of myofibrils that are responsible for muscle contraction. A sarcomere runs from one Z-line, shown here, to the next and is made up of many protein filaments running in parallel. Some of the filaments are thick filaments, mainly made of myosin, and some are thin filaments containing actin. The pattern of the light actin and darker myosin in the sarcomeres gives the striations of skeletal muscle, as you can see in this photomicrograph. This part is the light band, the I band, containing just thin filaments. Then there is the A band, which is the area containing the thick filaments. And then this area here, which only contains thick filaments, no actin, is called the H zone. To remember which is which out of the A band and the I band, just remember the A band is the dark band and dark has an A in it, and the I band is the light band and light has an I in it. You can also remember that the Z line, the end of the sarcomere, is the same as Z at the end of the alphabet, and the H zone is in the middle or halfway through the thick filament, and half begins with H. Looking at this diagram here, you can see the thick filaments in the middle. Here you can see the myosin tail and its two protruding heads. This is the thin filament containing actin, but it also contains two more proteins called tropomyosin and troponin. These are very important in regulating the contraction of the muscle. Tropomyosin is a long thin molecule that wraps around the actin filament, covering the binding sites for the myosin heads on the actin filament and troponin is a globular protein found at intervals along the tropomyosin. Additionally, we have an immense protein called titin, which has multiple folds and works like a spring, helping the sarcomere recoil after contraction and preventing overstretching. Now let's look at the process of muscle contraction. The initiation of muscle contraction is brought about by the stimulation from motor neurons. A single motor neuron and all the muscle fibres that it stimulates is known collectively as a motor unit and this is the functional unit of skeletal muscle. All these muscle fibres in a motor unit will receive stimulation simultaneously and therefore contract at the same time. Motor neurons are connected to muscle fibres via neuromuscular junctions which are a type of synapse and work in much the same way as synapses between two neurons do. When the action potential reaches the presynaptic knob of the motor neuron axon terminals, it causes a neurotransmitter 
to be released into the synaptic gap or cleft. The neurotransmitter diffuses across the synaptic gap and binds to receptors on the sarcolemma. This binding causes sodium ion channels to open in the sarcolemma and sodium ions rush into the muscle fibre. The increase in the positive charge inside the muscle fibre's sarcoplasm brings about depolarization, generating a new action potential in the muscle fibre. Like in a neuron, the action potential passes along the cell membrane, here the sarcolemma, and it passes down the T-tubules. Remember, these fold into the muscle fibre. Because they fold inwards, the action potential passes very close to the sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is housing lots of calcium ions. The action potential passing down the T-tubules causes calcium ion channels to open in the sarcoplasmic reticulum, so calcium ions pass out of the sarcoplasmic reticulum into the sarcoplasm. So how does this release of calcium ions bring about muscle contraction? The most widely accepted theory of how this happens is called the sliding filament theory. This describes the sliding or movement of actin and myosin in relation to each other, bringing about contraction. The calcium ions that have been released into the sarcoplasm bind to troponin, which is attached to tropomyosin. This binding of calcium ions to troponin makes the troponin change its formation, lifting the tropomyosin out of the way of the myosin binding sites on the actin. This therefore allows the myosin heads to bind to the actin, forming cross bridges. The binding of the myosin head to the actin causes the release of inorganic phosphate from the head of myosin and the change in angle of the myosin head, which you can see here. The head bends through about 45 degrees. The change in angle pulls the actin filament along. This is known as a power stroke. As this occurs, ADP is released from the myosin head. The release of the ADP from the myosin head allows ATP to bind to the myosin head in its place. This binding of the ATP causes the cross bridge between the actin and myosin to break so that the myosin head detaches from the actin filament. The ATP molecule is then hydrolyzed back to ADP and inorganic phosphate by the enzyme ATPase. The hydrolysis of ATP releases the energy needed for the myosin head to return to its original position or recock. It is now ready for the whole process to occur again. The myosin head can repeat the binding and sliding action up to five times per second, generating the force needed for movement. Muscle contraction continues until there are no longer calcium ions present to expose the binding sites for the myosin heads. During muscle contraction, the lengths of the thin and thick filaments remain the same. They just slide inwards across each other. This brings the Z lines closer together. As a result, the I band and the H zone get narrower. However, seeming as the A band is the name for the region where the thick filaments are found, whether on their own or with the thin filaments, and the thick filaments do not physically change length, it means that the A band stays the same width. So, through the power stroke, we can see how, with the neural coordination of all the muscle fibres, this tiny movement can bring about the movement of the bones and overall motion of the body. So in this video, we have seen how a myofibril is composed of repeating contractile units called sarcomeres. Sarcomeres run from one Z line to the next. A bands are where thick filaments are found in the sarcomere. I bands are where only thin filaments are found. The close association of actin, tropomyosin and troponin helps control contraction. A motor neuron coordinates the contraction of the muscle fibres in its motor unit. An action potential brings about the release of calcium ions from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The binding of calcium ions to troponin allows myosin heads to form cross bridges with actin. The power stroke of myosin slides the thin filaments inwards, shortening the sarcomere. Binding of ATP detaches the myosin head from actin and hydrolysis of ATP provides the energy for the myosin head to return to its original position. The I-band and the H-zone both get narrower during contraction. 
Note that the buzzwords are highlighted. Try to use these words in your written answers.